Welcome into another week of Bears Talk Live presented by Jay Brown Realtors here from the Blowing Rock Draft House in Hickory on a rainy Thursday afternoon. Eric Bach, happy to be joined as always by head football coach Mike Jacobs. And coach, let's just dive right in. Saturday didn't go like you guys wanted to. Very close. Hard fought 35-28 loss at UVA Wise. And we talked after the Newberry game. It was just a couple of plays in the game, you know, that it could have gone the other way. And we're talking about a different result right now. So how do you guys just find those inches, find those plays to, to get bounced back this week against Tusculum? I think it always reverts back to our consistency and, and really, you know, you, you build your resume for a win throughout the course of a week. Sure. And, um, you know, we, right now for us, it's, it's really, you know, the plays that we're missing on are at too critical a time. Sure. And that's, that's where we got to get our competitive focus when, when it's at the most crucial point of the game, whether it's a third down, got to have it on offense, yep. uh, a third down, need to stop on defense, and then, and then certainly playing fanatical special teams. But, you know, those are the things that we got to continue to do. I, I, I believe you always go back to the basics when you're struggling on anything, blocking, tackling, running, protecting the football, and, um, you know, being really consistent with how you work those throughout your course of the week in practice. So looking ahead to Tusculum, coming to Moret Stadium this week. Good to be back home. This is coming off the Newberry loss. Had a really nice performance. Good bounce back win against a good Mars Hill football team. Another good football team coming in this week in Tusculum. So there's no better environment to get back on track with a win in front of those fans between the bricks on a Saturday afternoon. No, our kids are fired up to be at home. You know, uh, one of the unique things this year is we only have four home games. Yeah. So, um, you know, with the young team, we're on the road six times. And uh, it seems early on like we've been on the road for a while between yeah. the bye week and some of that. And so uh, to get back home, to get in from our fans, to feel that energy that comes from Moretz and being between the bricks, uh, I think will breathe life into our kids on Saturday. We talked about practice a little bit last week. I want to ask again, this week of practice, I've heard good things about the focus and the intensity this week. Uh, would you echo those good things? Uh, absolutely. I think I anytime you, you lose and you have to reevaluate sure. and resharpen or reset in certain instances, um, you know, expectations and, and laying the groundwork for what it takes to be successful each and every week and, um, you know, we still think we have a really good football team. We have to find a way to overcome those few instances at the most critical moments. And we got to make plays instead of hurt ourselves. And I think our kids have been ultra focused. Um, I think our scout teams have done an exceptional job of the look they've provided this week. And I think our kids are going to show up ready to play and play well on Saturday. Yeah, the potential of some weather Saturday. We've seen kind of crappy weather this week sure. in Hickory. And this forecast is, you know, 30%, 40% on Saturday. So you guys have been practicing out in this. But you've had almost perfect weather for all your games this year. So how have you guys been preparing for potential weather this Saturday? Yeah, I mean, we just practice in it. You yeah. just go. You know, I'm a, I'm a Cleveland, Ohio guy. Sure. So the weather change. you may see all four seasons in a 24-hour yeah. span up there. You just kind of you show that. up and you go to work. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, any anytime you have an opportunity to throw wet football throughout the week in practice, if you see it on game day, I think that matters. Our guys got to be really diligent with the, you know, the protection and, and how we carry the football on, on Saturday. And you just go out and play. We can't. We can't control the weather, so we can't let it affect what we're doing. In, the, in weather, running the football becomes more important, and that's something you guys have done really well this year. I mean, Dwayne McGee, another 160-yard game on Saturday. Jadis Davis saw an expanded role, caught a couple balls for 50 yards. So it's got to be a comforting feeling knowing that even with the results maybe not going the way that you would like to recently, the rushing attack and the fundamentals have been, have been strong. Yeah, there, there's – at, at, at times when you lose, right, like you, you can't get too down. You have to find the positive, sure. right? You got to learn from the negative, but you have to find the positive. And, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of guys that are doing some things really well. We need to do it more consistently right. um, and of our standard. And I think that, you know, running the football has been something that we've done a good job at. Dwayne's been exceptional. He mm -hmm. runs the ball really hard. Jadis, it was good to get him in the mix. Again, Daquan Sturdivant's a guy that keeps showing up in practice. He'll continue to see a bit of an expanded role. And really what it comes down to is some young offensive linemen, and, and we got to play well against a good Tusculum defense. Speaking of positives, Preston Joseph played maybe his best game at LR on, on Saturday, 13 tackles, and including 10 solos. Also played really well when Tusculum came here in the spring. So can you talk about his performance on Saturday? Yeah, it, it's good to see Preston. Preston's a guy that's played a lot of football for LR. Sure. I'd classify it more uh, coming out of 2019. Um, 
was taking much more uh, special teams reps yep. and kind of spot playing some defense. Um, but with his expanded role as a starter, as a senior, um, I'm just really pleased with how the kid works. You know, he, he cares about it. He cares about his teammates. He works really hard. We've asked him to, to switch positions at times in that linebacker room. And uh, he's done everything we've asked him, and he's, he's playing really good football right now. You talked about the rushing attack. There's been good balance. I mean, Grayson Willingham's over 1,000 yards. He's 147 yards shy of becoming the all-time passing leader at LR and 221 yards shy of the all total offense leader in school history. You know, sometimes I feel like he gets lost. Like, we, you know, we just take him for granted that Grayson's going to be Grayson. So he's not lost this week. We're going to talk about what he means to this football team. Sure. I mean, listen – Anytime you have a kid of that high character that's played in as many football games as Grayson had, that chose to put his adult life on hold to come back and be a part of something special, um, and now you got a little bit of adversity, yep. and to watch him lead through that and lead strongly through that um, is something really special. And, and he's a big reason for for the offensive success we are having. I believe we're, you know. Uh, I believe he's leading the league in passing, he and is. I believe Dwayne's leading it in rushing. And so, again, there, there's some really good things happening. Yeah. We've got to be more consistent in what we're doing. And, you know, he's the quarterback. There's a reason he's got a big poster on the, yeah. you know, the size of the building on the back out there. Yeah, that was kind of my next thing is you lean on leaders. You know, the Dan Lube is the guys that came right. back, the Graysons, the Dreeks. How have they been leading through this time? Uh, strongly and solidly. Yeah. You know, th those guys, um, they're unique because they've seen it when it wasn't great. And then they were the part of getting it to where it needs to be. And so, you know, they've taken great ownership and making sure that, um, you know, in, in conjunction with us, that the, that the young guys or guys that haven't been around understand what it takes um, and, and reiterating that, you know. And, and sometimes you lose focus on that, and that, that's a big thing. But those guys have all done a really good job. I'm, I'm pleased with the leadership. Let's flip to Tusculum. Heartbreaker for them on Saturday. They've played a ton of close games this year. They were going down. They were down by two points, going down to score or win the game at Wingate and threw a pick six on the last play of the game. Right. So they've, they've won close. They've lost close. What have you seen from the Pioneers coming into to Hickory this Saturday? Uh, seen a bunch. Seen a really good football team. Yeah. I think um, – as you just look across the country, right, in any division of football and certainly even in our own conference, um, there's a ton of parity. Yeah. And there, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster for everybody. And, um, you know, they've, they've had some very close games where they've played well. Uh, they had a fair amount of loss in the offseason due to some transfers. But uh, Jerry Oden's done a really nice job of, of replenishing his roster. Uh, the quarterback's a two-time transfer from Georgia Southern and Limestone. And um, he's playing really good football. He's a guy that's elusive in the backfield. I think number zero, yep. uh, the, the, the Parm kids, as good a wide receiver as there is in our conference. Um, and they're running the football pretty well. And then, you know, Coach Odom's trademark has always been they've played pretty good defense. So, you know, they're not too dissimilar from us. When they play well and things are clicking, they're a really good football team. But, you know, as everybody's had, there's been some lapses where, you know, it just hasn't gone their way. And, and uh, you know, we're going to get a really good team that won the spring championship that's going to come back ready to compete. One thing you guys have been strong at is starting fast you've scored a touchdown on three of the four opening possessions of the year that's got to be a key to this game kind of get some confidence rolling early in the game yeah absolutely just kind of the way things have uh have shook out we've had the ball to start the game sure. i think in three of the four games mm -hmm. maybe even all four i think in all four yeah all four. and so uh you know coach soto's done a really good job with our openers and and being uh being varied in what we do from week to week and you know putting the ball in our playmakers hands and and we've done a nice job starting fast we got to finish <laughs> Like, yeah. we've got the start down. We, we need to finish better now. And, and uh, no, but I've been pleased with what we've been able to do that way. Is that scripted, or is it just kind of a feel thing about how the drive is going on the opener? Yeah, I mean, we, we have some openers. We always go in with a list of plays that we, you know, we like in certain situations. But most of the stuff's broken down by situational football. So last question, one key to the game that you'd like to see your team improve on against Tusculum on Saturday? We need to grow up, and we need to have – great composure the the elimination of stupid penalties is is something that's holding us back yep. and we need to make sure that again on the most critical downs in the game at the most critical times whether you're young guy old guy we need to have great focus on our job attention to detail and our execution and if we do that then we're gonna have a chance to win the game on saturday head coach mike jacobs and the bears back between the bricks on saturday 1 p.m kick with tusculum 
Got to fill the stadium and support the Bears. We look forward to seeing you there. Coach, good luck. Appreciate you, Eric. Vice Thank President you. for Athletics, Kim Pate, coming up next on Bears Talk Live. What does unlimited mean to you? At Carolina West Wireless, it means unlimited media, unlimited fun, and unlimited access to our nationwide high-speed network. Sign up today for an unlimited data plan and pay just $35 per month per line for four lines. And we'll include hotspot and big-time savings on a new smartphone. Take $350 off the revolutionary new Samsung Galaxy S20 and get more out of your unlimited. Expect more, get more. Only from Carolina West Wireless. Welcome back to Bears Talk Live, presented by J. Brown Realtors here at the Blowing Rock Draft House in Hickory. I'm happy to be joined by Vice President for Athletics, Kim Pate. She's in charge of everything that is LR Athletics. Kim, thanks so much for some time on a Thursday. Eric, thanks for having me. So it's been a strong overall start to the 2021 season, and, you know, it's after the chaos that was the COVID year for you and administration, it's got to feel good to be back to some semblance of normal. Absolutely. It's been awesome just, uh, you know, seeing our teams compete um, and, and, I mean, across the board, um, you know, our coaches and our athletes have really done a nice job this fall um, competitively. I mean, yeah. volleyball's had the best start since, I think, 2004. Yeah, something like that. Um, you know, and, and we're right in the hunt with all of our all fall of sports. And got to give a shout out to Triathlon that's yeah. going to be competing in their very first, um, you know, um, national championship. They yeah, earned a national already qualified. Yeah. So um, they don't even need to worry about it going yeah. into this next week, but uh, excited about all the fall sports. Big one for swimming tomorrow. They go to Mars Hill. That's a nationally ranked program. Uh, basketball. I mean, we got that coming up. We see basketball teams. That's right. Tonight is our tip off. Coach yeah. uh, Sullivan is hosting a tip off event with alumni and donors at um, Cafe Rule just down the street. So we're like, it's, it's, go time yeah. you know we're excited lots of great energy coach sully's taking his team to knoxville tennessee to open that's the right season. we're playing coach barnes team yeah. um october 30th unfortunately it's the same time as the winget football yeah. game so there's like 27 games that day that's right that's right a lot of big ones that's a big one obviously the wingate football game speaks for itself so i want to talk now about the centennial campaign i mean we're, we kind of got that started the the stadium is there's going to be renovations. We've already seen Schufer Gymnasium, but can you give us an update on the timeline and maybe the fundraising of the Centennial campaign? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've had great response. We launched the campaign back uh, early August yeah. at our annual dinner, and um, at that point we were, uh, I think, just shy of $8 million. Yeah. We're approaching $11 million right now. Um, so, like, we're well on our way um, with this campaign. And to be honest, it's, it's the most money that has ever been raised for any particular project in Little Ryan's, you know, um, modern history, right? So, dollar-wise. Um, so, you know, we're excited about the progress and the support we've received. And, and we feel really great about where we are with this campaign. So, um, I mean, timeline-wise, just looking at it, it's, it's tight. I'll be honest, yeah. Eric. We yeah. got a lot of work to do. <laughs> right. Um, as soon as we finish up our football season, you know, as soon as we're done and uh, we're going to be, you know, starting the demolition and, and getting to work on this project. And um, it could be everything is done by August 2022. That's yeah. the goal. But certainly um, that's going to depend on fundraising as well as just like, you know, some of the constraints with the construction world right now, like um, just the supply yeah. issues. But you know, we're already ahead of a lot of those issues to make sure that we at least get that west side up and running. Sure. Get the new grandstands, get the new press box in place. And, um, I mean, just think about it. In a year from now, yeah. we could have a very, you know, just a state-of-the-art press box, grandstands, and, and really see um, something very special come to life. It's already a special place to watch a game, and it's just going to get better. I mean, Absolutely. You can't, you can't beat Moret Stadium now, and the fact that it's improving is just super exciting. And Schufer Gymnasium is part of that as well. We already replaced the floor, and volleyball's undefeated on the new floor. Um, it's off to a great start. The floor looks amazing. So that's phase one, and phase two is coming after this basketball that's season. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, next spring. Next spring, next sure. Spring. Yeah. Um, we, we will start on phase two, which yeah. really is the, the new bleachers. Um, we'll have, you know, um, arena-style, you know, 
um, you know, seating. Um, we'll have, we're hoping for new video boards, yeah. uh, you know, some branding and such. So we'll really finish off the interior of, of that space to, to bring it up to the top of our conference. So shifting to homecoming, it's two weeks from this weekend. It's crazy how it feels like the month of September just disappeared. But a blur, man. Yeah, it's a blur. But October 23rd, when Limestone comes to town, is homecoming. But there's lots of things going on. The online auction opened today. And That's that right. was something that we saw great success in during the COVID year when we couldn't really meet. But it's something that is kind of sticking and can you just talk about the online auction and, and how things are progressing absolutely so it launched this morning for those you know yeah. our followers who didn't see the email that went out right. from from aaron bessie uh, we have 150 amazing items you know in the auction and and honestly like last year was the highest we'd ever, amount of money we've ever raised with our auction sure um and and it it was such a success that what we're doing is we're really blending kind of what we've done traditionally in the past which is a social bringing all of our you know alumni together and our friends of the program together around homecoming the night before the game um and we'll do that again this year uh we'll we, we'll do it in super gymnasium we'll talk a little bit more about sure. that but it, what's really special i think about this blended approach is you know, all sports, all alumni, regardless, like maybe you can't make it to homecoming, but right. if you live geographically away, you can participate and support Lenore Ryan Athletics through this initiative. And it, you know, all the proceeds go to scholarship. Last year we raised over 40,000. And uh, Aaron Bessie set a, a new goal for this year uh, to top that 50. 50. So um, we're excited about that. Plus, when we get together, which we haven't really had much social time, exactly. you know, and it was just awesome two weeks ago hosting our first home football game, yeah. you know, with everybody coming back just to see people, right? right? And to see, you know, the energy. We're looking forward to that this homecoming to be able to have people back on campus, you know, and, and spend some time together as a Bears family while raising money for, for scholarship and Lenore Ryan Athletics. Feels like the concept of homecoming means even more now that we had that year, year and a half apart. So it's, it's going to be great. The, the in per, so the in-person uh, auction social will be Friday the 22nd. That's the night before the homecoming game. And that there'll be a band that'll showcase the new gym. That's in uh, P.E. Monroe Auditorium, That's right. That's correct? Right. Yeah. There'll be a live auction, actually. Yeah. So... Um, we'll have some really cool, um, you know, offerings to, to bid on. Plus, you know, just, you know, the energy and seeing everybody and seeing the new gym is going to be pretty special. Yeah, for those that haven't seen it, the floor is spectacular. So if you have a chance to get here, I highly recommend it. There's also other events. There's a golf outing Friday night. we got our Hall of Fame ceremony on Saturday morning. Yeah, uh, so of homecoming weekend. That's right. Or Friday. Golf kicks off in the morning yeah and, and and to be honest i'm understanding that there are there are limited spots available so yeah. for those of you watching you need to get your names into uh, martha reich as soon as possible we have a couple spots left but we're right now already we've already eclipsed the highest number of participation in the history of the hanley painter golf outing um memorial so yeah and the, the hall of fame ceremony to induct two classes right because That's we we did kind of yeah. We, yeah, so there's a, we, we kind of have a, a mishmash, to be honest. Sure. You know, we, we had to pull somebody from the 2019 yep. class that wasn't able to attend. That's Crystal Clary, a yep. uh, women's basketball player. And then we had, we, we inducted Mike Houston last right. spring. Um, obviously, that, you know, that's from a scheduling standpoint sure. worked out for him. And so it's one 2019 and then the rest of the 2020 yeah. class. And so we'll have five amazing inductees that we're looking forward to celebrating at 11 a.m. P. Monroe. Yeah. It's open to the public. We'd love to have people come and, and be a part of that ceremony. Yeah, it's going to be phenomenal. I had a chance to do some voiceover for, and just reading off the accomplishments of these, of this class is just mind blowing. So if you have any questions about Homecoming, if you need any information, Martha Reich is, is the one. It's martha.reich, that's W-R-I-K-E, at lr.edu. She can take care of you. Homecoming-wise, Bears Club-wise, all of it. Kim Pate is leading the charge for LR Athletics ahead of the game in D2. So, Kim, thanks so much for your time, and, and go Bears. Awesome. Eric, thanks for having me. I will say if you need to register for homecoming yeah. events, golf, gala, auction, um, Email Martha versus doing the online registration. We'll yeah. just make sure we, do, we get you on the list. So thanks, Mar Eric. Martha will get you in. Kim Pate. We got Josh Alderson from Men's Soccer coming up next on Bears Talk Live. 
Paramount Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. Final segment here on a torrential downpour Thursday afternoon here from the Blowing Rock Draft House here on Bears Talk Live presented by Jay Brown Realtors. Eric Box, so happy to be joined by men's soccer assistant Josh Alderson. Josh, we haven't talked, we haven't had anyone from men's soccer on since week one. You guys have been killing it. They've a three-game win streak. It was a tough one last night. There's, there's no beating around the bush there. Lost to Catawba at home, but things have been going well and things will continue to be going well. You guys have the leaders to bounce back from last night, that's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, we had a fantastic four-game yeah. four win streak. Um, and then last night, we didn't quite get it right, but no. the one thing that we know we have is a fantastic group of young men, and then yeah. they'll bounce back. Um, Before last night, you were playing easily the best soccer of the season. There was a little bit of a lull in mid-September where you guys just, you were doing everything but scoring, right? But that switch has been flipped so what do you think the biggest factor in, in that change was we did a lot of work on the on the training pitch on yeah. our finishing um and it was just it was going to come we yeah. were creating good opportunities creating good chances and we have the quality sure and um, sometimes you have games where it doesn't quite click in the yeah. game but we have the players to do it and and they've started to to show that they can do it on a regular basis now hopefully one of the guys doing it on a regular basis is Victor Cascon. Scored his 30th career goal mm -hmm. on Saturday against Lincoln Memorial. In 10 of those 30, a third of his career goals have been game winners. That's, that was a stat that kind of jumped off the stat sheet at me. But Jack Winter said when we talked the other day there should be a statue of him after his career is done. But basically everything has been said about him. But what perspective can you give on him about being around him every single day? That's, for me, the best part. Right. <laughs> everyone else gets to see the, the records. Everyone gets to see the goals that get scored. Everyone gets to see the, the coverage that he picks up. Yeah. Um, but just knowing the young man is, is the best part for me. He's right. sensational. When he first came, um, very, very different man than he is now. Um, struggled with the language a little bit. Struggled um, settling in immediately with the speed of play and that kind of thing. And now you see him. He dictates games. Um, he brings the highest quality and the, the most important moments. But more than that, he's, he's a real leader. He's helped a lot of guys, old and young, international and domestic, to settle here. Uh, and that's what's so special about him is the way he is around the guys. As a woman of, of the program yourself, the way he plays and represents the program has to make you proud, not just as a coach, but as somebody who has lived LR soccer for a long time. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see. You know, I did a little bit of digging a couple of summers ago into a lot of the history of the program. Yeah, um, and just to see how he matches up and compares along some of the the prominent names that we've had is really cool. And and it's exciting to see someone of his ability and of his um, character representing the program so well. Getting away from Victor for a second, Noah Tiefel, he was hurt early in the year. You kind of missed him offensively, but now that he's back and healthy, he's made such an impact offensively. So I guess my question is, how does his presence at the front of the attack kind of change things for you guys? He gives us a lot. He gives us an awful lot. He's yeah. um, physical. He's uh, a guy that can hold up and connect uh, our line so we can get our midfield more involved. He can run in behind for us. Uh, he's starting to find the finishing touch. Uh, if we can keep him on this nice run of form, then it's going to help us an awful lot. We have a lot of great options up there, um, but he's, he's definitely someone that has taken on the mantle this year a bit. One of the other options is his fellow countryman, Benny Genizer, who has scored his first two career goals in back-to-back -back games. So all of a sudden, the floodgates have opened for Benny. What has been the change for him, or no change? He's just finally getting what he deserves up front. 
I think I think that I think he's he's contributed a lot over the last two years. This is his um, super senior sure. year, um, so he's contributed a lot, um, and he's finally getting the opportunity to to pop up in the right areas, mainly through his own uh, work in terms of where we want him to be. Our formation allows us to have great attacking outlets from both our right and left wing back. So it's good to see Harry getting some assists. It's good to see Nico score, and it's great to see Benny popping up in areas to to find the back of the net for us. If these guys can continue to be an attacking threat, it just gives us another another option to, to hurt teams. That was my next point, was Harry. He, you know, he's a young player, but he's learning. What do you think the impact of Noah and Victor and all those guys that have been around at the front has had on Harry? Because he's been so effective, he's so fast, and he plays that position where it seems like he's running the full length of the field like the whole game. So his endurance has to has to be just top notch. Yeah, he's he's very direct. He's very um, aggressive in the way he plays, and we love that about him. Um, he gives us so much on that left hand side. Yeah, uh, and he's given us quality. You know, when we get the good quality deliveries into the box, we have the guys that will finish it for us, and that obviously helps with his confidence. Sure. Um, but he's he's a young man who over the next four years we're going to see him develop into uh, an incredible player. He's already started very very strongly. Yeah, and the pass that he made last night for the first goal to set up Benny Genizer's goal was, it doesn't get any better than that. So I want to talk a little bit because there's so much experience. You know, you talk about Victor and Danny Fernandez. You talk about, you know, Jaime Demanuel, all the guys that are seniors that will be gone after this year. But there's a, a perfect mix, I think, of experience versus youth. You saw Jaheim Smith come into the game last night. Out of necessity, there was an injury that brought him in, and then he scored a goal, his first career goal. I mean, he's been great in the time that he's gotten, but what do you think the impact has been on those young guys from the older guys, such as Victor and Danny and, and the rest of that crew? It's, it's so important. We can do a lot of coaching. We can help these guys in a number of ways, but the experience that they can receive from the, the senior players is arguably the most important thing yep. that that experience been there done that what it takes to be successful and the, the habits every day that you have to get into to give yourself the best chance that when you cross that white line you can really impact the game so yeah. having the leaders that we have who show what this program is about who represent this program on the field on the in the classroom in the community um, in the way that, that we are really proud that they do it great people make great bears is our mantra of course sure. um, and you know the majority of our squad, if not all of them, really, really adhere to that. So the new guys coming in and seeing the older guys be successful in life in that way is just fantastic for them. Let's look ahead to this weekend. Another big one, Queens coming to town. No time to dwell on last night. I mean, there's still seven league games left, and everything that you guys want is still right in front of you. But um, big 5-1 to one win over them in the spring. Kind of an offensive explosion when they came here. Uh, what have you seen from this year's version of Queens, and what do you expect on Saturday? Well, touching back on that one, we were we were phenomenal. Yeah, that day. we were we were on another level. Um, four really quick goals, mm -hmm. um, and and one of the best starts to a game that I've ever seen right. from our program. Um, so we were fantastic that day. It's going to be a very different game this time. Um, Queens will be a lot stronger. Traditionally, yeah. historically, they are one of the strongest teams in the league. Yeah, um, and they're a team that this year, when they get it right, are very very good. When they don't get it right, if we can get it right, then we've got a good chance. But it's it's on the day, who's going to turn up, who's going to do the right things as consistently as possible. Um, we have full confidence in our guys. You know that. They're, they're a brilliant bunch. Um, we believe wholeheartedly in them and in what we're trying to do. So we're excited. It's, it's going to be a good challenge, and that, that's what you want. Last question. You played for Jack Winner, mm -hmm. coached with Jack Winner. He just won his 50th game last week at Coker. What do you, you've seen him from both sides as a player and now as a coach. What do you admire most about the way he leads this program? There are so many things. Right. So many things. Um, from when I first met him, way back in 2014 yeah. to now, um, to see how dedicated, how hardworking, how committed he is to bettering himself for the good of the program, to bettering the program, to bettering the guys in his care is just inspirational. Um, you know, that's not just players. He takes great care of myself and Carlos and, and Diego and, and Hector when Hector is here and all the coaches that we've had. So he's just so uh, dedicated to doing everything he can to give everybody else the chance to be successful. And he deserves the, the 50th win more than, more than anyone I've met. He's fantastic and he's taken his programs to heights that we haven't seen since the mid-2000s. So right. it's, 
it's brilliant um, that we're uh, led by him. We're very fortunate, and long may it continue. Yeah. The Bears back in action Saturday night against Queens. It's going to be a good one. It was a good one last night. It'll be a good one this upcoming Saturday. They need your support. Come out to the Moret Sports Complex to watch Josh and the Bears take on Queens. That's it for this week's Bears Talk Live. We hope to see you this weekend. All three teams home, football, men's and women's soccer, all on Saturday. So a full day of home Bears sports on Saturday here in Hickory. We hope to see you there. If not, join us on the Bears Sports Network because we'll have them all for you. So, Josh, thanks so much for your time. We'll talk to you next week on Bears Talk Live.